Welcome to the Cabrera Lab podcast. What's up? Nada. Nada? Nada. No, that's not right. I reject your answer. <laughs> There's always something up, especially for you. Your brain's always going a mile a minute. More like 10 miles a minute. I'm super chill. No, you're not. You got something going on there. Hey, you said something interesting the other day. Oh, man. At the breakfast table, actually, we were talking to our young son, our yes. gorgeous young son. Uh, and you said to him... I said to him what? You said to our son at the breakfast table, something along the lines of, well, comma, you're young, so everything matters... And everything also doesn't matter. And you sort of said there's this paradox that happens when you're young. And I think what you were getting at is the choices you make today are both important and unimportant. Yeah, so so that's really interesting that you caught that. Um, so, you know, I love mathematics. <laughs> yes. But... People say all the time that the language of nature is mathematics, and I don't think that's true. Mathematics is amazing, and it has amazing properties, but um, I don't think it's the language of nature. I think um, I think that the language of nature is the reconciliation of paradox. Oh, I like that. I think nature is really good at finding things that conflict and making them cooperate. You know, by cha by level changing or something like that, right? Like so, so like a predator and a prey at one level is obviously like it's a zero sum game, right? But at another level, they are they are symbiotic, right? Yes. They take care of each other at the species level. So, um, I think paradox is one of those things that that a lot of folks have trouble with reconciling it hmm. and either because of my brain or because i've spent a lot of time in the mountains i think paradox is something that really comes easy for me mm -hmm. and i think it's hard sometimes when we hear paradoxes because it just sounds like what yeah but i was thinking would that what i was saying was when you're young there's so many things that you're going to do when you're young that will make a huge difference, both positive and negative, right? I mean, like yeah. you can really, yeah, you can do some things that ruin your life early in early life, in yeah. life, right? Like like drugs and you know things like all that. All kinds of risks, you know, yeah. driving uh, yeah. is a is a very dangerous one. You know, drugs are a dangerous one, um, and so you can do things that can really ruin your life. You can also do things that can set your life up in a in a fantastic way yeah um like getting good grades and getting into college and you know blah yeah. blah but the paradox part is that you can you can literally screw up for like 20 years straight yeah <laughs> and you're gonna be fine it's still recover you can still recover like yeah. i look at i look at like you know, all the things I did that were just totally that I messed up, you know, mm -hmm. and and um, didn't get right and, and just learned from over time. And I think that's hard for young people to understand because I like I, I see a lot of young people that are really stressed out about their life and like yeah. how much are they going to how many AP courses are they taking and how many this and what tests and blah, 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 and what sports and what volunteer activities and how am I going to get into college and all these kinds of things. And that's great, you know, in the, in the sense that they're pushing themselves and trying to be better and, but also like chill. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Just, it, it, it's not, it doesn't matter. Well, because it both yeah. matters and doesn't matter. Right. And I don't know. I think that almost sounds like kind of BS. Well, I don't, well, I don't know if it's BS, but I think. But it's true. That's younger the problem. people lack the wider context. Yeah, they haven't been around as long as we have. They haven't like we've made mistakes. Yeah, we've recovered, 
And so we have that sense of what matters, what doesn't matter. And and also that's why we're, that's why parents are here because we know the difference. But I'm saying not just mistakes. Yeah. Like I'm there's people that like you made mistakes. But I was a fuck up for like <laughs> 20 years straight. Oh, I see. I'm like you can really be a fuck up. <laughs> yeah. You know, for a long time and then you can get your shit together. Yeah. That's what I'm saying is like the, I think everybody knows that they're going to make mistakes, but young people should be like well, number 1 the patterns of behavior that I that I do now mm-hmm. are going to be patterns that possibly follow me my whole life. Yes. Right? Yeah. So, you know, like a work ethic. Yeah, like a work ethic, like like a integrity, character. You know, taking care of yourself, nutrition, yeah. all those kinds of things. Those are things that I think you should focus on. Mhm. Right? Yeah. Your yeah. character, your integrity, your health, your health, your nutrition, your your thinking, your self reflection, your 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 yeah. commentary on yourself, your self talk, your self talk that yeah. matters. Yeah, it seems like you're making a distinction almost as you're talking between the big stuff and the little stuff. If that makes sense, yeah, the local stuff and the global stuff. So locally, it doesn't matter if you take AP biology and AP math and no. this and that. No, I mean. It might in in the moment it might seem really important, but in the scheme of your whole life, it's probably not going to make all of the difference, no. right? But who you are as a person, the character you have in this moment and in all moments yes. is going it's to matter. Make a difference. So it's interesting. I don't think it's easy to teach people, young people in particular, that how to differentiate between the two. Yeah. Because I think when you're a teenager, everything feels just like like this yeah and yeah. for now it's like here everything's yeah. on their fall right their whole world is very small the world gets a lot bigger yeah the things you think matter won't mm-hmm. and just always having that perspective mm-hmm. that this is just a tiny slice of the world and there's so much out there you know yeah. like i always say to, to our kids yes we were driving down to like, uh, where was it? We were driving down to D.C. or something. And on the way down, we, we drive past Gettysburg. Yes. And Gettysburg always has these enactments, right? Yeah, yeah. Reenactments. Re-en- sorry, reenactments yeah. <laughs> and uh, of, of the battles. Yeah, yeah. And so as we're driving, there's this there's this truck next to us with a big trailer, and then he's and he's got uh, like a sign on the side of the trailer, and it's all about this guy basically does like historically accurate reenactments. He's got all the gear, all yep. the clothing, all the camp wear, stoves, all mm-hmm. that stuff of the period. Yeah. Right. The rifles. Yeah. Of the Civil War. Yeah. And you think like when I was a kid. I didn't know that existed. That wasn't one of the jobs that people told me about. It was like doctor, lawyer, you know. Accountant. Accountant, president, fireman, policeman. Yeah, it was a weird list. Right? So. Like those those were your options. Teacher. And teacher, yeah. you, know, you know, or something like that. Mm-hmm. But like nobody goes, yeah, you could, your job could be like. You could do anything. <laughs> doing Civil War reenactments, like, and that guy was like super passionate about it. Like, you could just yeah. tell when he drove by. He, this guy loved what he was doing, and he's probably really good. He's at really it. good at it. He's really, really it. into it. Yeah, and it's really cool. But you can't. I don't know if you. Yeah, I guess you could get a history degree or something like that. But there's like not a degree in reenactments. Mm-mm. Nobody's nobody's telling you that that's a job that exists. Yeah. And there are thousands and thousands of jobs like that. There are thousands and thousands of passions like that that no one tells you about. So well, the world's yeah. just going to get bigger and there's going to be more options. Yeah. And no one tells you that your passion can become your purpose or your profession. Totally. Right. I mean, when you're younger, you you fall into those categories. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. I'm going to do this or I'm going to do that. It's yeah. a small set. Yeah. But as you get older, it's like, well... You literally, whatever you have great expertise and interest in, could probably convert that into a career. Sure. 
Absolutely. And so it, in, a, in, a, in a way, it opens everything up, but that also could be very confusing. Yes. That it's such a wide set, especially yes. if you're young. Yeah. Right. And that and that's where I think my mother my mother was kind of really she would always say to us, Whatever you do, just be the best at it. And it doesn't matter what you do. She said you could she always used the, the, the uh, taxi cab driver as an example. <laughs> yeah. And she'd say, you know, like even if you want to be a taxi cab driver, be the best taxi cab driver in the world. Yeah. Right? And if you do that First, you know, you'll get really good tips and people will really appreciate the service and you'll raise up, maybe become a manager. And then maybe that'll lead to owning a taxi cab company. And yeah. then that, if you're the best at that, then that'll lead to like, you, she would always make this example. Ford Motor Company might come to you and say, we want to design a new taxi and we want you to help us design it. She thought big. Yeah, she thought big. Like, <laughs> and, and you would be the person that was working with Ford Motor Company on the newest you know, model of car that's going to yeah. be used for taxis. Yeah. Or the you know, city of New York would come to you and say, how should we redesign this system to yeah, yeah. get better and things like that. So she would always say like it doesn't matter what you choose just be the best at it just just yeah. work hard and and be the best that you can be at it um but it wasn't like oh you, you i'm only going to be proud of you if you're a doctor or a lawyer or whatever yeah. like yeah. Do, you do you but be the best and in like that, that sense that's a good message yeah that was like that, that like i could that was graspable I like that. I like that. For me, it was always my whole my whole thing was about just getting to college. I was the first person to go to college in my family. Oh, wow. It was never about what I did after college. It, in my house, it was, it was just get to get, college. Get to college. Yeah, I think, and and good. then at, once you're there, yeah, figure out what that figure out what do. you want to do. Right. Yeah. So for me, there was that big sort of goal. And well, that's the other thing. For again, I guess this is sort of targeting somewhat younger people, but but. Or parents. Or parents. But it's like we think, oh, you got to declare your degree. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. No, you don't. No. No, you don't. And you shouldn't. College is a place, a good college is a place where you can sample mm -hmm. from every discipline, and every topic, and find what lights your fire. You know? Exactly. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, to me, college was like a smorgasbord, you know, and then that, and I often dropped out. But but uh, you know, I dropped out of a lot of colleges. But but I loved going to class. I didn't like all the norms of class, but I loved going and learning. What were the norms? Like sitting still. Like being told what to do, sitting still, <laughs> having to sit in the first yeah, yeah. place. Yeah. But but what I loved was at the beginning. Yeah. Because I would go to the bookstore and I would have a book mm -hmm. and I would find the class that I liked and then I would find the book and then I would just take it home and read it. Oh, yeah. And and I would I would really love that, that someone who had expertise in this topic had chosen this book was kind of like mm -hmm. and, and then the syllabus kind of guided you through it. And so by the, t the by the time the first class had come, I had read the book mm -hmm. and the syllabus. And then the class was kind of boring because you just sat yeah. there and, and you know, you could have yeah. done so much more with it if they had done the reading or just read the book. All at once. Well, why would you read a book in, like, you, when you sit down to read a novel, you don't read it over the course of six months. So this is a place where... where you read it as fast as you can read no, it. No, no, this is a place where we all have different learning and brains. Yeah. And... Uh, for a lot of people, it takes a little longer to digest it and to understand it. So they read things piece by piece. Yeah. Right. I mean, you know, when we teach our class, yeah, we have to break our book down into sections. Because well, but you asked me why I didn't like the thing. I mean, that's what I, I wasn't. I wasn't criticizing other people. No, I wasn't. I, no, I didn't think you were criticizing anybody. So yeah, I just didn't like the all that. I didn't stuff. like the structure. The limitations. That's what you're saying. Yeah, I you wanted were able to, to learn it. You I wanted, wanted to, to learn it. no, not always. Sometimes I didn't understand it, but 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 I wanted to engage the material in a passionate and an aggressive way. 
and it didn't seem very aggressive and passionate. Like it wasn't, right. it wasn't, it wasn't like, let's throw our whole self yeah. into this material. It felt like, yeah, do the minimum that you have to do. And we're going to do all these things to force you to do it. And we're going to test you in a way that doesn't yeah. really test you, well, but forces you to do a bunch of things that aren't important. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't know. I, we've talked about this before in particular in relation to schooling and, and our own kids. I actually think the better way to teach is to do a subject yeah. for two weeks or three weeks intensively and then do another subject instead of doing a little bit of all seven subjects yeah. for a whole year. Yeah. Get get the moment where you can dive into it and it's all you're thinking about mm -hmm. and you'll learn it much faster, yeah. much, much more deeply. Yeah. And so instead of having, you know, seven periods where you have 50, I don't know, 43 minutes. Yeah. You know, every day of the week, have three weeks where you learn algebra, and that's yeah. all you do is algebra, and it, and it allows you to focus on only that. Yeah. I mean, that would be cool. That would be cool. I mean, or just about? pitch like a bunch of tents in the quad with your professor. Yeah. And just camp out <laughs> for like seven days straight and talk about the subject, and then you're done. Do you do realize that you add camping and hiking to every yeah. possible thing? I mean, wouldn't that be cool? <laughs> if you could. <laughs> wouldn't that be you cool? Would. Like you're just cooking hot dogs and like. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. 24-7. 24-7 talking, about, talking about like sociology or or like, yeah, French, biology, whatever, whatever, whatever it is, is evolutionary biology yeah. or something like that. That would be cool. So you said earlier. We, I, like mating newts or something like that. You mate newts. Okay, you could. You could do that as part of a like biology Like as part of the class. project. Yeah, like a biology class. Remember when Alina had to pull, had to look at something like a thousand fruit flies? Yeah. So that sounds cool. For like cool. three weeks. Huh. She had to go in and look at them and count their wings and all kinds of stuff. Yeah. So I imagine I, I put myself in our son's shoes and I wonder how he reconciled. Because you said nature is reconciling paradox. Yeah. How do you think he reconciles everything matters and nothing matters in one sentence? Like, how do we reconcile paradox? Yeah, I mean, I think it's like how you do anything is how you do everything, right? And yeah. so while nothing really matters in the whole big scheme of things, like this thing that you think is so important, this meeting, this yeah. deal, this degree, this whatever, none of those things matter in the whole scheme of things. Like your life's going to be fine. If I'm not saying it doesn't matter, like, yeah. you know, you're not, it's not important to you. I'm just saying if that thing that you desire so much doesn't happen, mm -hmm. you'll happen. live. Like it's not yeah. the end of the world. Yeah. But the way you do everything, the way you do anything is, is the way you do everything. Yeah. That matters. Yeah. Right. So that. the way you carry yourself, the way you the way you put yourself into things that matters when you're young, mm -hmm. understanding that and beginning the work mm -hmm. on that. Yeah. Having integrity that your that your words and your actions are in alignment matters. And it's going to take years to build integrity, to build the habit of integrity. Yeah. And so it matters to start now. It matters to start them young. Having character, it matters to start them young. Yeah. So it becomes a habit. In order to learn those things, a lot of you're going to make a ton of mistakes. Mm -hmm. I always say the the drugs and the cars. Yeah. I mean, those are the ones you can't recover from. Yeah. You know, like those can really ruin your life. Doing something really stupid in a car, automobile accidents, or doing something really stupid with drugs. Those are the two that, 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 I mean, that can really ruin your life. But not getting into the college that you have, that you've decided you have to get into, or your parents say you have to get into, like, that's not going to ruin your life. It might actually open up your life to new possibilities. Yeah. I think when you are talking, it seems to me the job of the parent is to make that distinction for your kids of mm -hmm. the things that really will matter mm -hmm. over time, mm -hmm. always, like mm -hmm. you were talking about integrity and work ethic and things like that, and distinguish that from other things that even though locally they seem like they're the most important thing, mm -hmm. globally they're really not. Globally yeah. they're just 
a blip in the universe of your life, right? Yeah, absolutely. And so if you make that critical distinction for them, like we, we've done for Carter yeah. and the girls, obviously, yeah. um, that's how they how they learn to see the paradox but understand it and navigate in a way that's useful. Yeah. And I also think part of it is, you know, we talk a lot about loving reality, is knowing that there are paradox, there are pl- times of paradox that are just, that's what they are, that they exist, right? Yeah. And they're part of life. Well, the paradox is just that it's about the journey, not the destination. I mean, this is the great thing that you realize when you climb mountains is like you, you make everything about the summit, but then you realize you you only stand on the summit for like, yeah, you, you plan a 30, it takes you a year to plan a 30 day expedition mm-hmm. and you stand on the summit for 10 minutes. And you probably feel pretty pretty sick by the time you get yeah there. <laughs> yeah usually you're like Dying. you got a headache Headaches. and you feel yeah. shitty and yeah you know so so if you make it if it was actually about the summit you you just wouldn't do it right you know you've got to learn to enjoy the journey otherwise it's not worth doing because ten minutes doesn't doesn't make up for I mean it's awesome being on the summit's awesome don't get me wrong but it. You you have to find a way to enjoy the journey, as as kind of cliche as that sounds. Yeah. And the journey is you're never going to plan it out. It's going to unfold. And you're never going to get through without making a ton of mistakes and without a bunch of stuff happening that are, is unexpected. Right. And adapting to those things. And so it's more about the way you take that journey the way you do life not what not what you do but what how you, you do, do it. but how you do it and who you are when you do it and who you are when you're doing yeah. it and so those things matter and i guess that's the part for young people it's like young people they're all thinking about who they're going to date and you know how they're going to find love and all that kind of stuff and it's like figure out who you are and that person that's right for you will show up yeah i promise you that you figure out who you are you have a good relationship with yourself Mm -hmm. and the right kind of person will show up yeah in your life well that holds true not just for young people but for all people all people because how many times have i met i mean i've met people who are you know 30 40 and they all of a sudden have a moment and they transform yeah. their sense of self and they you know you've seen a lot of people with this but that's a weird paradox if you think about it yeah right because it's like all i want is to find that person that's going to complete me or that's going to you know make it so i'm not lonely or wh- whatever it is yeah. right that that i have somebody to hang with in life yeah and so the great lesson is focus on a relationship with yourself yeah, no, I think that's interesting. right. Which, yeah. which is like the counter intuitive to finding somebody else, and right. yet that's precisely how it happens. Well, I think it's funny too because it's exactly what you're saying. When when people are entirely focused on how attractive they are, and they focus on their looks, and they focus on all of these sort of superficial things, and they're not in touch with the you know who they are and the kind of people that they want to be. I mean, I've met many women who say, you know, as soon as I stopped caring, yeah, I I met my the love of my totally. life. As soon as I stopped being all self absorbed and worried about this totally. and that and this and that, and just sort of started living my life for me. Yep. Then I met this person or that person. And that's a par- that's a paradox, yeah. right? That, that doesn't it doesn't make any sense, but it makes total sense, mm-hmm. which is also a paradox, right? Like <laughs> it doesn't make any sense that in order to find another person that's right for you, you don't focus on that. Right. You it focus on something else. Well, I also think about when you when you have a kid, and we've talked about this before, when you have your first your first child, there's a moment where you realize you are at at the same time more important than you've ever been and also the least important person <laughs> yes, exactly. ever, right? And so then you yeah, learn yeah, like, to 
you, you learn to, to navigate that, you know, like you take care of yourself so you can take care of your kids, 100%. you know, and, and that's that's an interesting way to think about it. If I was if I were to give my young self some advice, that's the advice I would give them is like you got tons of time to figure it out. Mm -hmm. Get to work. Yeah. <laughs> you know, which, again, Start is like mixed messaging. Right. Because it's like. Yeah. Get to work. For sure, get to work today. Yeah. Don't waste a single second and you've got tons of time to waste. Yeah, and you'll get there. Yeah. And you'll get there. Also, it, you know, it reminds me of what you always say, the micro makes the macro. Yeah. Right? So do things in the small and over time you'll get, you know, you, yeah, you'll exactly. get the outcomes that you want. Interesting. I think that's the key. I think we should name this episode The Paradox That's Not a Paradox. <laughs> what would be a funny title for A Paradox That's Not a Paradox? How would you make a paradoxical title out of paradox? Well, that's the thing is I don't think paradox is paradoxical. That's the, that, I think that's the idea when I say that the, 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 the language of nature is the reconciliation of paradox. What I mean by that is nature just doesn't see it as a paradox. It oh, finds I a way yeah. that it's not... They're not paradoxical. They are absolutely. They're like co coexisting. Yeah, they're just coexisting. Yeah. They're they're completely together. They're completely symbionts. Hmm. Interesting. It's not actually a paradox. Like we think it's a paradox, but it's not actually a paradox. It makes total sense. That think about who you're attracted to. You're attracted to people that are just loving life. Yeah. Right. You're attracted to people that are like full of energy and loving what they're doing and blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. So if you're focused on, oh, how, how am I going to you know, find the right person? You're not attracted to that. Mm -mm. Right. Mm -hmm. But if you're like, wow, that person loves kite surfing, you know, they're just so or, or like Civil War reenactments. I don't know. I was kind of like, that guy's cool. Like, yeah. he's super into this thing. He's like, he's so into what he's into. He's living his best life. He's living his best <laughs> life and he loves it. And when you talk to the, like, we went to the, and I, these guys are like mm -hmm. researching, like, for example, I love ultralight, you know, outdoor stuff. I am aware. I've been researching. <laughs> yes, you have. Camp shoes. Now, that might sound kind of nerdy, but camp shoes are really important because you use them for river crossings. And also, you know, a lot happens on your feet. And, and so you want to give your feet a rest for all kinds of reasons. Yes. And so camp shoes are critical, but you want them to be there. They need to have all kinds of things like flexibility, water crossing, dryability, uh, packability, traction, you know, breathability, all these kinds of things. But most importantly. But most importantly, they should be light. Ultra light. ultra light. So I have been researching the lightest shoe ever made by man. <laughs> I just think it's cool. I think what you're getting at is you're living your best life. Yeah, you're, like, like, you're curious me, about ultra light backpacks. So our kids like make fun of me because yes. I take a scale to all these stores and I weigh stuff. And I think the people in the store think I'm insane because they have like a yeah, food scale a food and scale. I'm putting shoes because on it's literally and, ounces. Yeah, it's no, I'm, ounces. I'm trimming ounces and and I'm drilling, you know, the soles of these things with the. Anyway. Yes. If I saw that, mm -hmm. you know, that I would be like, that guy's really into this. I'm not into it, but this that guy's really into this. Well, I do see that. Yeah. And I, you know, I think it's great. You know, you are following a passion. You're entirely invested in figuring yeah. something out. I mean, that's great. You're living your best life. You're doing what matters. And there's so many cool things in the world that you can that you can pursue. Yeah. Pursue one. I think that's the key is yes. like just pick one. There's so many cool things. Just pick one and pursue it. And, then and like, another. if you got it wrong or if you screw it up, you're going to be fine. But well, pick one. Well, also, and that's where it absolutely matters that you pick something. And it also totally doesn't matter what you pick or how you picked it or if you end up liking it or if you end up successful in it. Doesn't matter. But pick something and be passionate about it.
Well, and also know that your passion can change. Yeah. Because I think a lot of people get nervous about picking something because they think they're going to be stuck their whole life. Totally. And the truth is, just start somewhere. And that Anywhere. will lead to another thing, and that will lead to another thing, and you'll you'll be always doing something you're passionate about. Yeah, like I remember one time I saw these guys. They were uh, EMTs, mm-hmm. and they had cool pants. And I saw him. He was kneeling in the street helping somebody, and it was cool that he was helping somebody. But he also had the like little 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 tools on his ankle. Yeah. Like. That were in little pockets on his ankle. In his pants? Like on his, his pants. pants. Yeah. And I just thought, those are the coolest pants I've ever seen. Those are cool pants. I want those pants. So I like pursued becoming an EMT and w- was in an ambulance and, you know, drove an ambulance well, for a while. Let me translate and this all- back. Instead of buying the pants at a specialty store, you actually trained and became an EMT. Yeah. So that you could wear those pants. Yeah. Authentically. Authentic. Well, yeah, because yeah. it wasn't just like literally I wanted to own the pants. I wanted to do the thing cool. in the pants. Because he was cool. With the thing on the yeah. on that calf, yeah. you know. Yeah. It was cool. And then you you did that for a while. And, and then you found something else for a while. Yeah. So you don't it doesn't have in other words, it doesn't have to be some master plan. It doesn't have to be some you know, like perfect yeah. plan. Yeah, but I think the plan's going to emerge over time. I do think we have antiquated mental models about that. I do think that who us? No, not uh, people. People. Society. Yeah. The education system, because what do they do in senior year or junior year? They they sit you down like, what do you want to become? Oh, it's crazy. Where do you want to go to school? What do you Mm. want to study? And you're like, this kid is sixteen and a half, seventeen, and they don't say, where do you want to start? Yeah. Right? What do you want to do now? Totally. What interests you now? Because whatever interests you now will then translate into something else later and in that. And but that. that's what I'm talking about. That's why college didn't go so well for me. Because right. it was all about like you have to do some degree program. And, and I was like, I want to take this class over here yeah. and this class over here and this class and that class and that class. And I want this parts, these parts of those classes. And I want to bring them together in a unique way. Mm-hmm. And I don't necessarily care about these other parts. Right. And I don't necessarily care about these other parts of those degrees that those classes are part of. I want to I want to take what I want to take and build what I want to build, yep. right? And I don't understand like and 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 the universe is built for that. It's ready built for that. It's ready built for you yeah. to bring together the universe unique... says, but the institutions aren't built. For yeah. That. So That's we should problem. design that we should have mental models that are more in alignment with the universe, mm-hmm. more in alignment with reality that that because reality is ready built for you to take mm-hmm. all the different pieces and build your masterpiece, build your your thing, your vision, your whatever. Yeah. And sometimes you don't even know what the masterpiece is. You're just like, oh, I want to do crayons and oil. But it'll ma- it'll emerge or yeah, it'll emerge over time. I mean, wouldn't that be amazing if every university was interdisciplinary in in nature? Like, like it wasn't putting you on a disciplinary track. It's like yeah. well, you go figure out, dabble, yeah, like what decide what you want. And you know what would happen? The people who landed in a discipline would really want to be there. Yeah. They would have purposely tried and and landed there and stayed there. Sure. You know, and that would be cool. That'd be great. I mean, when I was I mean, like, it takes all kinds, but the point is, you can you can do whatever you want. Yeah. And you don't have to do it the way everybody else is doing it. I mean, I no. when I was when I was younger and still today, you know, if if the whole crowd is going that way, if 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 I'm standing here like this and I see a crowd of people running that way, I'll go that way. Yeah. I'll go some different way cuz that's where the open field is. Yeah. And that's where the the lack of uh structure structure is and stuff like that. Interesting. So you can go a different way. You can you can you can build something that nobody's built. So just like we have talked to our own family children. and children and things, what do you think? What do you think uh, people should leave here thinking about? What what should we? What what is the takeaway from all of this? Because it's been a it's been a great conversation, but it's been you know we've talked about a lot. So what are the nuggets we should reinforce? I would say, like, get to work post-haste. Mm-hmm. 
and chill out. Yes. Like aggressively work on something, anything, mm -hmm. and pursue it doggedly. Yeah. In a completely chill way that isn't like constantly worried and anxious and, yeah. you know, worried about whether it's going to pan out or whether you're going to get rich or whether you're going to get this or that or the other thing. Like just, just go where it takes you. And if you start that kind of journey young and start that kind of curiosity young, yeah. it'll, it'll take you to the places that you need to go. You know, yeah. it'll it'll emerge. Your life will emerge. And it'll be amazing. And it'll be amazing. Embrace those paradoxes. See them for what they are. Yeah. I'm going to say it's time to wrap. We're wrapping it up. Like, follow, subscribe, subscribe comment, share with your friends, randos on the street. Just what? share. I think it's interesting because you can imagine... Are people actually going to be like watching our podcast on their phone and then just walk up to some rando on the street and be like, you should watch this podcast? Well, we'll find out. Would they do that? <laughs>